There's one person nobody can resist, and that's a baby. With the innocent scent of a cuddly, clean baby. So this Christmas, take care of the hands that take care of you. <laughs> the Dyson Toner gloves. It's not uh, super grippy, but they fit perfectly. During the mid 2010s, extremely disturbing images or photos began circulating online, especially with the popular image board website, Fortune. But these photos originally appeared on a now non functional ghost site or forum known as Death Addict where it has now been archived since the 7th of February 2019 before spreading recently on the true crime subreddit. Most of the images showing what appears to be an unidentified man engaging in some very inhumane acts to say the least. An act which would make even the emotionally toughest people squirm with anger and haunt the weakest of minds. An act which is on another level of creepy, dark and disturbing with the images painting a full picture of the level of sadism that exists among humans. The man who most people on the internet would come to refer to as Dr. Gloves. But that was until everything about Dr. Gloves mysteriously vanished off the internet in 2018. Before I start, I would like to say that most of the images captured I would either censor, blacken or blur out heavily due to how graphic of a guy it is and also to avoid YouTube from age restricting the video or striking the channel. I might also censor out some words or use some understandable slangs throughout the course of this video. So bear with me. It has been reported on Reddit, especially by a user or OP by the name of you slash wayward koala on the true crime subreddit that the earliest date this set of disturbing photos might have been taken by Dr. Gloves could have been around 2014, which would line up with when they appeared on the internet. From the body structure, it's obvious to tell that Dr. Gloves was a heavy built man with height just few inches below 6 feet, somewhere between 5'9 to 5'11 and probably between the age of 30 to 45 years old. But what makes this a mystery have to do with him being unidentified in majority of these images mostly due to the signature covering of his face with a somewhat creepy gimp mask, wearing an overall white medical uniforms or a nurse's scrub. And of course, his use of various colors of gloves covering his entire hands and arms during his show of work. Hence the name, Dr. Gloves. And what are this show of work, if you ask? In this photo, he is seen standing and appears to be holding something which he shows to the camera. Obviously, there is no telling what this is because it's been censored. But that's until you realize that what the man or Dr. Gloves as he's called seems to reveal turns out to be a little baby. And not just a baby, but an unborn human fetus which is evident from the developing size and the reddish color of the skin showing that the unborn baby could either be a miscarriage or the victim of an abortion. But what makes this all the more effed up, if you ask? Some of us would argue that this is just a medical personnel doing his job. Well, the baby isn't just being held by Dr. Gloves, but seems to be just picked up with two fingers on the neck, showing it off to the camera in a way that seems disturbingly arrogant. Other images show the man playing with other corpses of stillborn or miscarried fetuses. For example, in this very disturbing image, Dr. Gloves is seen firmly wrapping his hands around the body of a human baby, a very tight grip to the little human, as if he was just squeezing a toy. It's important to mention again that all the photos of the fetuses or babies shows they are all dead, so there is no need repeating the word dead. The next photo shows him lifting by the truth or neck not an unborn fetus but a born baby that has lost his life dr gloves holds the little one by wrapping his two fingers around the neck showing off the decomposing flesh and the very cold face of death the same baby now placed on an autopsy table with his hands all wrapped around the little one in a strangulating stance another sure of photo shows him messing around the face of the little one pulling back the shins. 
Another photo shows him covering the nose and complete face of the little one with his large hands. In another image, he showcases with the obvious young fresh brain of a little one with an organ on a black tray. Dr. Gloves displays the red, diseased body of another unborn fetus. He showcases the freshly decaying remains of another little one. He squeezes the immature body of another unborn fetus and proceeds to hold it by the neck as if he was just holding an object. Displaying the body of the little one on the mock table alongside his gloves. He takes a picture as he opens the eyes of the cold face of the little one. His surgical tools all prepped onto the body, holding the tiny neck of the little one with just two fingers, twisting the neck of the little one in another angle. Dr. Gloves proceeds to hold the baby in a strangulating stance with his dirty latex gloves. Dr. Gloves inserts a finger into the mouth of the unborn fetus. A thumbs up close to the body of the unresponsive little one, lifting the body of the unborn fetus with just the tiny hands. Dr. Gloves displays or shows off his work as he dissects and reviews the internal organ of a little one, also proceeding to throw the organ up in the air and allowing it to drop to his hands. Alongside his gloves, he displays various brain matters of the unfortunate little ones. He showcases their young blood on a bucket. A thumbs up as the unborn fetus lay cold on the fridge. He poses for the camera with the little one whose half part of the bloodied skull had been carved open, revealing the bloodied brains. Dr. Gloves shows off as he dissects the midsection of the little one, revealing everything within. Carrying a black tray, he sweats underneath his mask as he stares down at the brain matters. With his camera on, he picks one of the three brain matters and shows it to the camera. Now, internet investigators, both on 4chan and on Reddit, would begin to analyze everything around the facility to reveal the mystery of the man behind the mask and gloves. Like I said before, from the build, it was obvious that Dr. Gloves was a man, and further confirmation was his hairy arms. This is not to say that women do not have hairy arms, but the excessively hairy arms as he shows off his various medical tools pointed to the strong possibility that Dr. Gloves was indeed a white man. So online users began to analyze the possible location using various items around him. Some details such as the ties used for the flooring, the walls including the fire extinguisher, cabinets, windows, light switches, outlets, doors and other surrounding equipment could have been from anywhere. But online investigators who were familiar with some of the items in the surrounding, including the shoe brand worn by the man, trays, medical supplies, and other nearby equipment were said to have allegedly all come from the United States. The disposable scalpels or surgical gloves shown was also used to determine that these very disturbing photos seem to be taken in a hospital in the United States, although most people would later describe it as a wooden craft toolkit. I myself decided to shake further by researching the nitrile exam gloves and of course, the nephron nitrile is made in the United States. Also, guess where the Protexis gloves is manufactured from? You guessed right. Some individuals might still insist that these were just dead babies being worked on by Dr. Gloves. However, these are not just the only photos as the story gets more disturbing. A statement from a user on the Data Addict forum would read, As horrible as it is, messing around with the corpses doesn't really upset me. However, having access to and messing around with the special needs children is infuriating beyond belief. Hurting and toying with those vulnerable children makes me want to hurt this guy in some life sentence never to be released in sin asylum. Effing asshole. 
this particular reference was made because Dr. Gloves proceeds to move his sadistic tendencies from dead fetuses and babies to living young kids. These kids belong to a vulnerable group commonly referred to as the special needs children. Children who are either suffering from chronic and terminal illnesses, physical impairments, and cognitive, mental, or psychiatric issues. Dr. Gloves had taken pictures of him abusing and messing with the severely disabled children, even going as far as doing so with those who are in a state of comatose. Several of these abuse ranges from him covering the face of a young girl who seemed to only be able to breathe with the help of a long tube. Forcefully, he pulls the hair of a little girl on a pink shirt against the wall in what seems to be a private office, taking disturbing pictures of a young girl with physical impairment, also doing so to a young boy with a mental condition, placing his heavy hands on the head of a young girl with chronic illness, even going as far as showing images of the girl as she visibly convulses, foaming through her mouth. A thumbs up close to a young girl with a terminal illness as evident with the attached medical tube, even going as far as covering the girl's nostrils as if to stop her from breathing properly for a while, an act which can complicate the condition of someone already in a vulnerable state, including opening the eyelids of a young girl with a health condition as she lays in bed sleeping, covering the face of another vulnerable young child smothering a little girl as she struggles to breathe and also going as far as doing the same to another young child suffering from a critical health condition. Tightly snuffing the nose of these young kids, whether those lying in bed or those standing, are everything Dr. Gloves seems to enjoy. And it's safe to imagine if someone like this can capture something of this nature on camera and sharing the images online, what other things has he done or recorded on video? for his very disturbing acts. It's evident that these numerous photos were captured in various locations and if you observed as I showed most of these censored or blurred images, you would have noticed that these photos seem to have been taken within what seems to be within the inner walls of what appears to be a dirty filthy looking mug within a medical facility, a long term care facility for children and what seems to be an office showing us that this is someone who has easy access to young kids and stillborn infants. A Reddit comment from Yossi's youth would state, He worked in a special need hospital for kids or minors and part-time in a hospital morgue for unsuccessful births. Around the time these images originally appeared, knowing that Dr. Gloves worked in a hospital, internet investigators on a Discord group, including forshaners and Redditors, kept on digging deep to know what hospital this man works for. But first, his name has to be uncovered. The first clue would come from a pop picture image as Dr. Glove stands close to a blue HP stream professional laptop as he works on a diseased baby. If we zoom carefully, we see what appears to be a name tag or badge of some sort. The zoomed images were sharpened where a name was revealed. Dr. Glove's name turned out to be a so-called Edwin Billions. But of course, many of the internet detectives considered the possibility that the name on the medical badge could have been fake to throw people off his trails or even photoshopped. Asking why would Dr. Gloves go through the trouble of putting on the black gimp mask and being careful to cover his hands with various sizes of gloves to leave no trail in the images captured, only to leave his name badge in plain view. Other fortuners and redditors would also question why he would go through the trouble of accidentally leaving a badge during these image shoots only to photoshop a fake name on when it could have been easier to just remove the badge before taking the pictures or even not to release the images online after capturing them. Hence, some would consider the name to be real since it might have been either a mistake on his part that he accidentally revealed his name or it was super intentional. A comment from Pokeso Watts on Reddit would say, 
His ID card in one of the pictures is identical to a hospital in Los Angeles, California. I think it was the children's hospital. Someone also uploaded pictures of the hospital floor plans and the basement floor plan matched some pictures that were uploaded. They even thought they had a name and theorized the guy was possibly Middle Eastern or Armenian. This comment would receive a reply from another redditor by the name of StonyTak23 saying, I'm Armenian and that's what instantly stood out to me when I read that his name could be Edwin Billion. The badge might be photoshopped, but I would be very curious what connection that dude has to all of this. I don't think if he photoshopped it in or picked that name randomly, it's just too specific. I also decided to confirm this myself where I noticed that similar people with the same name on Facebook seem to originate from Armenia. But two years ago, around 2021, Redditor Falwom2887, who dug up some information in an old inactive Discord group involved in the online investigation, would say, How do we know he lives in the US? The badge revealed in the photo is the standard badge given out to all Glendale Memorial staff members as of current. We found that he lives in Glendale, California by searching his name through multiple search engines and found that Edwin Billions, which is the name on the badge, lives in Glendale, California. So that is to say that Edwin Billions, aka Dr. Gloves, may be an Armenian born living in the United States or an American with Armenian origins either from one or both parents. From the online information gathered so far, we can determine that those online investigators on Reddit and the now almost non-existent Discord and 4chan forums where this story originated from, they were able to trace the distinct floor patterns, wall, doors, windows, and even a Redditor would link the site where the blanket with the orange elephant designs in some of the locations where these images had been taken to determine the name of the children's hospital. The hospital name, which is said to be a so-called Dignity Health, located in Glendale, California. Now, this is not to say that there could not be possibly other hospitals or facilities around the area with the same blanket design, but this particular one was said to be unique to the so-called Dignity Health that also have children's subacute care facility. Hence, it was determined that Dr. Gloves, aka Edwin Billions lived in California, USA, where he worked in the hospital as some sort of a shy mortician. But actual morticians in America on different thread had reported how that can be possible, as they do not specialize in a specific type or age for the diseased, as Dr. Gloves seemed to mostly deal with children in these pictures during the 2010s. Even so many other people online would begin to guess the job done by this man in a bid to determine what role do give him private access to both dead and living kids. Even a statement from Cypress on Reddit who found a now removed or deleted archive thread on Discord dated 2018 containing information on the case of Dr. Gloves would read. They said his job is to transport the recently deceased from their rooms in pediatrics or NICU to the morgue and possibly prep them for autopsy. They believe he works at Glendale Memorial Health Foundation or Dignity Health. There is an image matching the ID badge but when I clicked on the thumbnail, I got a different image instead. So I guess the archive share isn't a great place to view more information. But according to the Discord group, the Edwin name is accurate. He resides in Glendale, California, at least at that time. A further statement from the true crime subreddit by the OP EO slash wayward koala would further say, From the photos, it's obvious that Dr. Gloves has ready access to both living children and fetal remains, so his working in a hospital seems likely. Some people say he is a shy mortician, although the extent of his contact with living children makes me question this assumption. Personally, I think he's a physician. He could be a nurse, but having access to a room where he could comfortably put on a gimp mask and pose with dead children seems unlikely for a nurse. In some photos, he wears scrubs, but in most photos, he wears a shirt. In one photo, he is seen wearing shoes with slacks and nicer socks. Again, this could be odd for a nurse. And with this, Different theories, both at the time and in this one to two year old subreddit post by OP, began to circulate as to whom Dr. Gloves or Edwin Billions really is.
Some online users have speculated that Dr. Gloves were two different people, pointing out that the perspective in which these photos were taken seem like someone taking photo of another, with this group speculating that the person on white overall is a man, while the one on scrubs with what appears to be an eye makeup is a woman. But this was also opposed as there appears to be the presence of tickers on the arms. Some speculated that the seemingly eye makeup might have been fake lashes or as a result of either sweating or water on the face underneath the mask as evident from the liquid impressions on the mask and clothing, leaving room to assume that these were all men in the pictures, probably the same man disguising himself in one form or another. Again, if Dr. Gloves was or wasn't a mortician, whether part-time or full-time, then one would wonder what sort of medical specialist he is that gave him a somewhat relaxed access to dress up and play with both living and non-living infants, even having the time to record and capture so many of these pictures. Hence, online users would ask the question, what other job could connect a hospital, an office and the morgue, which are all the different locations where these images with young children have been taken? Perhaps a branch of medicine that involves the medical care of infants, children, adolescents and young adults. And it all points down to pediatrics. At this point, it's safe to assume that the so-called Edwin Billions works or worked as a pediatric specialist, which explains how he was able to have access to these children, either in the hospital, in the morgue, or most disturbingly of them all what appears to be a private office where he could always work on both those alive or dead. With these various pointers, concerned internet detectives decided to report the story to the FBI using these images as proof. It took some time, but allegedly, after more contributed reports from various individuals were submitted online using the FBI website, an investigation at the Dignity Health Children's Hospital in Glendale, California would begin, and with many hoping that this very disturbed individual would surely now be charged and arrested, especially with tampering with cops and child abuse with the various evidence gathered. And what finally came of this very dark disturbing internet mystery after an investigation by the FBI if you ask? Well, on the Death Addict God Site Forum, OP would say, Dr. Gloves is a controversial post I had made in the past where, as you can see, this man has some form of authority and has access to dead children, and he does not treat their little corpses very respectful. The last time I posted these pictures, they created a lot of talk on who he is. Why is he treating those children life or dead like that? And where was he? And is he still around children? It turns out all I could find out was he worked at the California Children's Hospital, was a mortician, and I forwarded all the information I could find on my own to the Children's Care Division at the FBI. They have reported back that they could find he did nothing illegal, but although immoral, the pictures were not a crime. Not even the picture of him, obviously showing him abusing a young girl child. To further clarify this piece of information from another second-hand source, Redditor Pokiso Watts on the true crime subreddit replied back saying, That's what I record happened. FBI didn't care about his manipulation of the bodies and what he was doing to the children who weren't just fetuses. I remember the hospital and blueprints matching the pictures we are shared, and the Discord was trying to hopefully find someone in LA that would be willing to drive to the hospital to do recon. We were all pretty sure the guy was Armenian and I vaguely remember having a possible card description. But everything died down after the FBI refused to investigate. I'm sure this guy is still abusing patients though. I feel like he's been abusing children who can't report him. So it will turn out that some people from the now inactive Discord group and the non-functioning fortune thread and the death addict golf room allegedly reported everything to the FBI. The FBI authorities allegedly approached the so-called Edwin Billions at the Dignity Health Special Children's Hospital and possibly after a whooping few hours, the FBI commented saying that although what Dr. Gloves had done were immoral, there was nothing illegal he had done for him to be prosecuted. Yeah, you heard me right. 
capturing images of and disrespectfully manhandling dead fetuses while intentionally abusing vulnerable living kids isn't illegal, according to the authorities. Obviously, I'm not American myself and I really don't know how the laws on this type of case is over there, but I decided to research the California legislative laws on dead bodies and this was what I found. Every person who knowingly mutilates, intentionally disturbs or willfully removes any human remains in or from any location other than a dedicated cemetery without authority of law is guilty of a misdemeanor except as provided in this mentioned section of the public resources code which one you pause and read if you decide to just doesn't make this man not guilty of various disturbing acts various penalties which can range from paying an imposed fine or spending some months in prison or a combination of both is considered to be the punishment but since there was no mention of dr gloves actually being found guilty on this case not even for obviously being seen abusing some very young girls the case died off so quickly. Everything was buried and the story became almost non-existent online. Not being found guilty of any offense made some people also doubt the possibility that a person or group of persons who had claimed to have reported the issue to the police actually did so, especially since there was no evidence of the report. The so-called reports had been from a second-hand source. However, many online users of these forums mentioned that after days of tracing, that several posters showed proof that they had actually filed a report online on the FBI website with tips on the suspected hospital and the man in question. It's safe to say that due to the passage of time in a story that was just swept under the rocks, that this evidence of reports, if actually true, now ceased to exist on these forums. Many online users were so disturbed and concerned by this case that so many had said that even if Dr. Gloves was truly not found guilty of desecrating a corpse or abusing various children, at least he should have been found guilty of something called the HIPAA laws. Googling, I found out that it's a federal law that prohibits revealing sensitive patients' health information without their consent. In this case, Revealing the faces of the vulnerable children is an offense he should have been found guilty of. Some have also suggested that he should at least have been fired by the hospital authorities he worked for, as the information or images would be revealed following the investigation. The unsettling part of Dr. Glove's actions for most people stemmed from the imagination that if this man still works for the hospital or another hospital he may have transferred to, what is the possibility that he may have continued such act wherever he sees himself? It may happen to my kid or yours, was the fear amongst online users. You see, during my research into this story, I decided to see whether I could find a so-called picture of Elvin Bellians on so many search engines and through so many hours of digging for something useful. A particular comment on Reddit made me stop on my tracks. A comment by you slash zealous ideal underscore egg 5662 reads I'm excited on who was Dr. Gloves, Edwin Billions. I searched up this name and went to Google Images and I saw the exact same face that I saw in the tag. It was blurred out, but I could recognize face shape, and his new name is Dr. Harry Billion. I have pictures followed by another statement that his name was changed after his badge was leaked. I really don't know how true this is, especially after I couldn't get a reply back when I asked for the pictures, but I decided to check the pictures on Google and guess what I found. Just guess. Watch me as I search. Other comments such as, you are right, it sure does look like him and I think he changed his name to Harry Billion. But Gogo says he's a cardiologist, how could he have access to a kid's mug? Followed by another comment saying, he was a guy that worked in a kid's mug, I think. Hence comes the question, 
could this be Dr. Gloves? The Google profile shows that Dr. Harry Billion holds a Doctor of Medicine and specializes in cardiology with other subspecialties, having been in the medical field for over two decades. Remarkably, it says he still lives in Glendale, California, where he works in another hospital called Adventist Health, a hospital just 30 minutes away or seven miles away from Dignity Health Glendale in California, where the origin of one of the hospitals have been traced. As we saw earlier, his profile also shows he has been affiliated with multiple hospitals in Glendale. Now remember, online investigators on different forums when this story broke out had allegedly pointed out Dr. Gloves as being an Armenian and with my research also showing that the name Edwin Billions is a name of Armenian origin. That is until you notice that Armenia is among the language being spoken by Dr. Harry Billion, who allegedly was said to have changed his name amidst the controversy following the name exposed on his medical badge. Isn't this just a whole lot of coincidence? Now, this is me not trying to say that Dr. Harry Billion is definitely Dr. Gloves. This is me pointing out to very strange similarities for each person to decide the mystery behind the man in the creepy gimp mask with the shape of the head also looking very similar to the picture of Dr. Harry Billion. Digging further, I saw a YouTube channel of Adventist Health Glendale, which features a host of physicians, including Dr. Harry Billion, as he introduces himself and what he does. My name is Harry Billion. I'm the medical director of the cardiac cath lab and special procedures at the Heart and Vascular Institute at Glendale Adventist Medical Center. After completing my uh, cardiology fellowship at the University of California, Irvine, I decided to pursue further training in the field of interventional cardiology and vascular medicine. So I went to George Washington University where I did further studies and further training in, in these fields. Uh, after completing the specific training and special training, I came back to Southern California and Glendale, and I've been at Glendale Adventist Medical Center uh, over the last five years. The reason I chose cardiology is because this is a very dear field to me. I lost my uncle in the first year of medical school. Uh, he was uh, like my father, and he basically uh, died of a sudden heart attack at age 44. So I made a promise to myself that I'll be able to hopefully make a difference in patients at a young age uh, so they don't end up like my uncle. The ideal outcome for any potential patient that walks in my office is for them to maintain a long, healthy life without having to frequent the emergency room, without having to have their heart attack at the age of 50. And I believe that us as physicians, we play an active role in this matter by educating our patients, by making sure that they are following the proper lifestyle modification, they are on the proper medications, their cholesterols are adequately monitored and checked. Hospital, and then we have to get you to the cath lab, put a catheter inside, and then try to open up the blockage and then put a balloon and then uh, open up with a balloon and put a stent. Otherwise, you have irreversible heart muscle damage. Same thing applies with the brain. Whenever you're having a stroke, you have to get yourself to the hospital and then they either give you the clot buster medicine or they can actually take you to the cath lab and then they can go up and then they can uh, suck out the clot uh, and uh, balloon the vessels as necessary. If you noticed any hairy arm underneath the medical uniform, let me know if there are any similarities. Do you think these two men are of the same build, color, and Armenian looking? Again, Dr. Harry Billion might definitely not be Dr. Gloves. He might be a well-respected cardiologist whom I'm definitely not trying to wrongly accuse or defame or anything of that sort. These are just wide theories. It's up to you to analyze and determine whether this is the skin underneath the gloves or not. It is also important to mention that this video was shot well over 11 to 12 years ago, which should be around 2011 or 2012, just around the time before these images began circulating somewhere around mid 2010s through to 2014, as was reported. The coincidence surrounding Dr. Harry Bellion and Dr. Gloves just seems so on rail. That's all I have to say. To conclude, 
I once mentioned on another of our video in our channel titled Baby Monkey Hate on how some sick individuals use monkeys as a proxy to rail children to derive sexual pleasure by way of torture, a term best known as zoosadism. It's quite a nightmarish situation to imagine what else Dr. Gloves might have done off camera and captured in a video rather than just images making most of us wonder whether if he was just showing off dead fetuses and messing with and abusing the vulnerable kids under his care or if he had actually ever taken the life of any or more of these kids through these acts and while some of these images might seem to be just a man messing around with dead kids and vulnerable living kids which is still wrong in all levels of wrong whether for attention or a sick phone. It might also be Loki, a sexual fetish material which Dr. Gloves could easily have shared in dark internet forums, or just for his viewing pleasure, or a twisted combination of both. Who knows? Children abuse and torture pornographic material is normally used by sick, depraved individuals who share interest in this type of dark, sadistic sexual acts. A bizarre act which is evident when you begin to see comments under these images on death addict such as he has a good sense of humor i will give him that this is so cool look how small those brains are half of those kids look like fruit roll-ups a reference to toying with the kids still alive and doing so to the ones no longer alive another commenter would add i agree with the special needs children that's effed up beyond even me but on a side note I want to take home the baby with the black lips and put him in a jar. I will name him Leo Joker. He's so cute. This is when you realize that this comment was made in response to one of the unfortunate babies that had the lips jokingly and disturbingly painted black, supposedly by Dr. Gloves himself. I really don't want to bother reading other very depraved comments or the ones that have been seen by others. They are just horrific disgusting and choose how mentally and morally low some people could be both in real life and on the dark depths of the internet it goes to show you that if these images could trigger and absolutely disgust even lovers of various internet gore forums people who seem to be desensitized to various gore videos that they began to dox dr gloves to find out who he was and where he lives and works I guess it's safe to say that this man's online behavior added another layer to evil. Till this day, the identity and story behind the man dubbed Dr. Gloves remains one of the most disturbing dark mysteries on the internet.